Three, all glory comes from daring to begin. Compared to the other tactical steps in the sales process, prospecting provides the rare opportunity to ask yourself big picture questions and make strategic decisions. Since you are making key strategic decisions that will have a long-term impact on your performance, you should stay in close contact with your sales manager throughout the process. There's a lot of information you might not have access to, and your manager's knowledge and experience will prove invaluable in keeping you on track. There would be no way, for example, for you to know your company's different closing ratios in specific business segments, with your goal, of course, being to focus on the ones where the company has seen higher numbers. Your manager can also immediately tell you which segments are already well covered by other salespeople on your team. Excellent sales managers view supporting their sales force during the prospecting phase as essential, so take advantage of their expertise. Creating ideal prospect profiles. In some sales positions, especially at larger companies, leads are provided by the marketing or lead generation department. However, at most small and medium-sized businesses, salespeople are expected to find their own leads. And that can be pretty overwhelming, especially if you're new to it. Meanwhile, the 30-year veteran in the cubicle next to you is letting you know that all the good leads are already taken, but good luck to you. That sales veteran, of course, is flat out wrong, no matter the industry you're in. Most likely, he himself just forgot how to prospect. Think about all the new businesses that are being started across the country every year, or the decision makers who leave their positions, opening the door for successors with potentially very different views about their vendors and partners. Yes, the opportunities are there. You just need to follow the process and find them. The most effective salespeople start by looking at their company's best current customers. What are their characteristics? Which customer segments are dominant? Which industries? Which geographic territories? What type of business? In what stage of a typical life cycle of a business are they? Are they startups? Are they market leaders? Why are they using us and not our competitors? What are the different closing ratios per segment? For what customer segments do we have the best case studies? You have a much greater chance of closing new business by focusing on business segments with which the company is already seeing success. It will be much easier to confidently position yourself and your company as experts. And it will also be likely that prospects will have heard of some of the customer names you are mentioning, which further increases your credibility. Birds of a feather flock together. But don't companies prefer to deal with partners who do not offer similar services to too many of their competitors? To use the media industry as an example, would a personal injury lawyer be more inclined to sign an advertising contract with a TV station that is not airing ads from another personal injury lawyer? With the salesperson's positioning being that the lawyer would stand out much more and could really dominate the space? Or could this law firm be persuaded more easily by a list of 10 other personal injury law firms that have been seeing great results and became long-term advertisers of that TV station? In my experience, 19 out of 20 times, the latter is a more effective strategy. Just check your Sunday newspaper sports section with one car dealership advertisement next to the other, and you'll understand what I mean. There are many reasons for this tactic, one of which is that it gives the buyers cover in case the chosen solution doesn't deliver the expected results. It minimizes their risk. Let's say in our example, the advertising campaign didn't generate the desired results. It's much easier and safer to explain this to the powers that be by saying the strategy followed what many of the competitors were already successfully doing. Something else must have been the reason for the poor results. New business trends lead to new prospecting opportunities. Changes in certain business segments usually open up new opportunities for companies. Just look what happened to many industries during the coronavirus crisis. Sales champions took advantage of these changes and shifted their prospecting focus to categories that benefited from the economic turmoil. They targeted emerging categories like online education, faith-based websites and apps, or home fitness equipment. The coronavirus pandemic also turned out to be a geographic equalizer for sales forces that have been prospecting mostly in their immediate surroundings. Most of them were used to setting up in-person meetings with their prospects. Since those were no longer possible and all calls, no matter if the client was located in market or far away, were done through video anyway, flexible salespeople expanded their geographic view and focused on new, previously less heavily targeted territories. 
It is always an effective strategy to identify segments that are in the beginning stages of a growth spurt. This allows you to participate in the early success that companies in these segments are seeing and positions you to expand your prospecting focus when new players enter the segments. Generating lead lists. Remember while you're generating your lead lists that not all of the leads have to be good at this point. In a second step, we will filter out the ones that we don't want to focus on further. Figure 3.1 provides an overview of different lead sources you can focus on. Referrals. If you start a career as a real estate broker, one of the first things you are advised is to call every family member and every friend you have, childhood friends, college friends, work friends, new friends, and ask them if they are in the market for a house or a condo or know someone who is. Smart thinking. Too bad that with the exception of a handful of industries, very few are doing this strategically and consistently. Most people completely underestimate how large their personal network actually is. Just add up the LinkedIn connections of all your family members and all your friends. I guarantee you it is sizable. Some of the best deals I was part of started with client or prospect referrals. Clients love to help, but without you actively asking them for referrals, you will be missing out on great opportunities. Sometimes prospects are an even better source than clients, especially right after the moment they told you they can't sign off on a proposal you just presented. They will want to let you down easy and will try their best to assist you. The following prompt is a good start. I'm disappointed that this didn't work out this time, but now that you've gotten to know me and our company better, can you think of anyone else that might be able to help? Your existing customers may also have other divisions or brands that might be a good fit for whatever you're offering. This is another way to pick up leads very easily. Former clients. For the new salesperson who just joined a company contacting old customers, companies that used to be clients but are no longer, is a no-brainer. Again, however, few people actually do it. They are afraid that if the solution provided the last time wasn't satisfactory, this former client is no longer interested in talking to them. What they are forgetting is that new salespeople also have full deniability, in a sense that they were not part of the problem, if there was one, the first time around. For instance, you could say, I'm sorry to hear that happened, but we have a new team in place here, myself included, with a lot of experience and many new ideas that are getting our clients' results. I would love to come in and show you a few case studies, including results we generated for other companies in your category. Sound fair? How do you know what the former client thinks? How do you know what the person will say? You won't know until you make the call. Ask your manager to pull your report from your CRM system and add old customers who are no longer buying from the company to your lead list. You're missing a huge opportunity if you don't. Core competitors. Core competitors and their client lists are your next source of prospects. Core competitors are companies that provide a very similar service to what your company provides. Assuming you're offering competitive solutions, your conversion ratios with these prospects into meetings and sales will be higher than average. These companies are already sold on what you sell. They're just buying it from someone else. Game on. We will cover different positioning and sales tactics for this situation later in Chapter 15, but the great news here is that someone else already educated the prospect on the why of your product or service. If you're selling audio advertising, for example, calling on a company that has already seen success using this medium means that you don't have to convince the decision makers on the power of audio and sound. You only have to convince them that your idea, your brand, and your firm are a better fit for them compared to what they are currently using. Different industries use various competitive monitoring databases. Staying with our gold digging analogy from chapter two, these are the equivalent of metal detectors. Many media companies use tools like media monitors, which allow you to pull all the advertisers that bought time on competitive media during a pre-selected time period. If you sell advertising for a local TV station in Boston, you can easily select all the other TV stations in the Boston market and, within seconds, receive a list of all their advertisers. The only cautionary advice of this prospecting tactic is that if you are able to steal an account from your competitor, then your competitor will also try to do the same to you. This happens in every industry. It's the day-to-day -day blocking and tackling in sales. You can never take an account for granted. Expanded competitive view. 
continue to widen the circle by monitoring companies that might not offer a similar product or service, but are either addressing a comparable need a prospect is facing or are competing for the same budget. For example, an advertiser in Boston naturally has many other advertising options than just local TV stations. TV salespeople should therefore start a list of advertisers defined by monitoring newspaper, radio, outdoor, direct mail, magazine, or any form of digital advertising, even in-store advertising they uncover through strategic prospecting initiatives. Once they actually connect with these prospects, they will have to take the additional step of selling the medium, in this case TV, first. Only once they receive buy-in will they move on to their actual concept and solution. One of the most important determinations you have to make during the prospecting phase is to establish whether a prospect will have the funds to afford your offerings. Expanding your competitive view allows you to easily do this by monitoring how much money is being spent on whatever they are currently buying from other solution providers in the space. There are many monitoring tools available to assist in searching these competitive platforms for leads. Databases like Cantor or Miller Kaplan's X-Ray are examples used in the media space, with both providing spending data of advertisers across several marketing platforms. Business intelligence. While competitive monitoring and databases are very effective and efficient ways to prospect, you need to understand that they can only report on activities that have already happened. To use our TV example, you will be able to see what companies advertised on which TV stations or other media outlets in the past week or month or year, depending on the time horizon you select. It certainly is possible to project from past business behavior into the future. Think about a company that buys business travel solutions in the exact same week as their corporate offsite meeting every year. But to really predict future business opportunities, a salesperson needs to go a step further and stay informed about trends and other company developments in their core focus segments. For instance, consider a grocery store chain that is active only in the Northeast and decides to expand into California and Arizona. Or a startup that hasn't launched yet, but has received millions of dollars in funding. Or a new brand launched by an established player. You would not be able to find these prospects in the monitoring database. But you can find out about this type of news by reading trade or business magazines, by talking to other people in the category, even by talking to your competitors. Yes, developing connections with people active in your industry is never a bad idea. A great platform where you can learn about startups that have recently received funding is Crunchbase. Networking. Relationship marketing networking is not only a great way to get introductions and set up new business meetings, it is also a great way to find out about emerging trends in a particular industry. For example, how market shares have been shifting or any new entrants into the field. Conventions and trade shows in the marketing world like FinCon, CES, South by Southwest, and the Advertising Festival in Cannes are great examples of events with thousands of participants that offer numerous opportunities to network. Some of them can be costly, but that's usually more the case for exhibitors than regular attendees. Even if the real decision makers typically will not be physically present on the exhibit floor, walking the aisles and talking to people at the booths of potential leads can be an efficient and effective way to prospect. More locally, business journals like Crane's Business host and publish business events. Many of them are free and the ones that are not are often worth the investment. It is also easier than ever to actively join networking groups. Some are being hosted regularly as video chats on Zoom, while others meet in person. And companies like Chief, a private network focused on connecting and supporting female leaders, have made a prospering business out of it. The important thing about relationship marketing is that you fully commit to it. You will be spending money and time on it, so you need to have a plan. It takes the right preparation, focus, and effort, and it certainly can be exhausting, but it has a great multiplier effect. Jeffrey Gittimer describes networking as building a people resource bank that pays interest and dividends that compound annually for as long as you're alive. People will pick up quickly on the fact that you're just there to make a quick buck, so don't approach it in an aggressive, sales-driven manner. Sales champions understand that networking is about nurturing long-term relationships. Online Research Platforms Expand your search further by using additional resources available to the business-to-business -business salesperson. A great example is the Book of Lists, which local business journals like Crane's Business publish once a year. 
The book of lists ranks companies in different industries by size. You want to know the biggest banks in your market, the fastest growing companies, the largest privately held companies? The book of lists includes them all. They come in both online and printed formats. Online research platforms like Winmo, Hoovers, or Lime Leads allow you to create customized lead lists based on user-defined criteria. You can filter by location, revenue, industry, type of business, and other parameters. We will cover LinkedIn and how to use it to connect with prospects in a later chapter, but it is worth mentioning LinkedIn's Sales Navigator platform as a great prospecting tool here. Its search for leads and search for accounts functionality is invaluable. Sales Navigator requires an annual fee, but at the risk of sounding like a LinkedIn salesperson, the investment will be worth it many times over. Needless to say, Google searches can also help you generate lead lists. Along with helping you find leads, the results also allow you to find more detailed information about certain business segments and their players. Remember, though, when you're using online research platforms, they allow you to pull thousands of companies and potential prospects. Of course, that's not a bad thing, except that it can become overwhelming quickly. Many times, it is not easy to establish if a particular prospect is worth pursuing. This is the main reason why, in Figure 3.1, Online research platforms fall into the widest prospecting circle. The inner circles allow for comparatively much more targeted prospecting. 